Good day, my name is Sky, and I appreciate you spending some study time with me. I'm here to help you make money in online poker by teaching you key strategies and getting you to take action. I got a great episode for you today. I just got out of a five buy-in downswing by using this simple strategy every single play session. It's called Focus Sessions. We're going to get into it. Go to the show notes page to help you take notes, smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 501. Without further ado, let's uh, do this gambate. What are you going to do about it? Uh, probably something stupid. Good, but you've already done that. Then something crazy. So I use for myself, and I recommend to all my students to use focus sessions for ingraining skills into your skill set and working on new strategies. Now, focus sessions, that's where you play to learn. You are not playing to earn. So it's just one or two tables of online poker for about an hour or so. By limiting the number of tables and the time that you play, you help yourself stay focused on your chosen strategy and your mind stays fresh. You don't get tired from playing two to three hours at a stretch. So I recently used focus sessions to work through a five buy-in downswing. And you can see a screenshot of what my graph looks like over the past uh, 5,300 hands. You can see at 1,000 hands in, I was down five full buy-ins, slowly worked my way out of it to where right now I'm profitable 1.5 buy-ins up over, it took me 4,300 hands to get there and about three weeks or so. But I credit focus sessions for that improvement to results and of course, improvement in my skill set. So I'm going to give you five tips for effective focus sessions. Now, I recommend with these five tips, you can actually use them as a pre-session warm-up. Go through the tips. It'll take you about five minutes to do this work. Write everything down on a piece of paper, all the bits of the strategy that you're going to focus on so that you can refer to it as you play. Now, one of the strategies that I focused on while working through my downswing with these focus sessions, it was check-raise bluffing. So as I cover the five tips here, I'm going to reference the strategy of check-raise bluffing as an example for each of the five. Tip number one is to choose one strategy to practice for the session. So a focus session, it's most beneficial when you're practicing only one strategy. Let's imagine you're trying to practice three betting pre-flop, check raising on the flop, double barreling the turn. That's a bit too much at one time. I think that you're better off separating these three different strategies into three separate focus sessions. Now, people think that they can perform well when multitasking, but I've been a firm believer for years now that multitasking is not beneficial. I believe in the idea of one until done with action. We do better and we improve more quickly when we're focused on just one strategy at a time. So whatever your chosen strategy is, write that at the top of a piece of paper. And then next is tip number two, know the strategy components. You're going to write these down on that same piece of paper as well. So you got to think about what is good strategy around that focus? What situation do you need to put yourself into to use the strategy? Which board types help with the strategy? What player types are great for using this strategy against? And what HUD statistics or player tendencies are you going to look for that's going to help you use the strategy effectively? So let's cover each of these with the idea of your practicing check raise bluffing. So you would write each of these on a piece of paper. The first one is the situation. You need to see the flop out of position and preferably against one opponent because that just makes it easier to steal the pot post flop. Now this is most likely going to happen when you're defending the blinds, but also if you open raise and you get a caller in position against you, or if you open raise, face a three bet and you decide to call from out of position. The second thing you want to think about is the player types. So generally for check raise bluffing, you want to target tight aggressive and loose aggressive players. Those are the ones who can read strength into your check raise and they're more capable of folding their draws, their ace high hands and their under pairs. If you try to check raise bluff fish and gamblers and maniacs, it's a bit tougher because they're more likely to stick around with marginal hands and draws. You also want to target players who respect your out of position raise. So look for positionally aware players. And again, that's oftentimes the tight aggressive and the loose aggressive players. The third thing around your strategy is the board. So for check raise bluffing, dry and unconnected boards work very well. 
Think of things like Jack, Six, Deuce, Rainbow, or King, Seven, Three, Rainbow. With those type of boards, there are less strong pairs and less draws that they can have. So their in-position bet, it's more likely going to be a weak hand trying to bluff you. And so they'll be quicker to fold versus your check raise. Now the fourth strategy component you want to think about because you're an online player is your opponent's statistics and their general tendencies. So just about any online poker strategy that you're trying to practice, it's going to have some related HUD statistics that you can use to find good opportunities. When it comes to check raising, for example, you want to pay attention to your opponent's flop c-bet and their fold c-bet to a raise statistics. Other tendencies might be their flop aggression, so how often they generally bet or raise. You want to see them having high flop aggression, because high flop aggression means they're more likely bluffing on the flop. Now, speaking of HUD statistics, I have a quick shout out to some people who purchased my Smart HUD 4 Poker Tracker 4. So I want to thank Sebastian Velus, Kelly Oyama, Susan Braniff, Jacqueline Foxhoven, Adam Hayes, Ian Bowers, Matt Dronkers, Julian Lewis, Luke Frankson, Andrew Beaver, Rob Walter, Simon Talbot, Tomas Mahoros, Osama Rahman, Gillis Quinville, Leonard Stahl, Andrew Kerlin, Manuel Canera, Emerson Wong, Eva Sykarova, Michael Leonard, Isabel Couture Dion, Fabrizio Palladino, John Hasselfeld, Jason Thompson, Michael Mayer, Jane, Tony Salmon, William Kilgrow, Jason Norris, Jason Willis, Nicola Lorai, Guy Hines, Christian Koraluski, Patrick Cumming, Murdu Patel, and Shannon Johnson. Woo! Lots of names, lots of people picking up the Smart HUD 4 Poker Tracker 4. Now, the Smart HUD comes with 4.5 hours of video training, and it is the best online poker HUD in the business. There are three HUDs for cash games, full ring tournaments, and six max tournaments. The HUD itself has 16 or more elements, and the six max tournament HUD has a few more stealing related elements in it. Plus, there are seven custom pop ups for more detailed tendency reads. This is the HUD that you need. Go to smartpokerstudy.com slash smart HUD to pick this bad boy up. And there's a link in the show notes page as well. Tip number three for improved focus sessions is to set a goal. Now, I love setting a goal for the number of times I'm going to use my strategy. Often, it's five or ten times or like some kind of nice round number. The more difficult the situation, the lower my goal. So if you play a session today and you hit the goal, tomorrow, set a bigger goal to push yourself even further. Now, when it comes to check raise bluffing, I would set an initial goal of three times. If I hit that goal or exceed it, next session, I'm going to go for five or maybe six. Tip number four is to tag relevant hands for review. So in Poker Tracker 4, you can create your own hand tags. For the check raise bluffing focus, it could be like check raise bluff test or just check raise bluff. So every time you put yourself in a spot to check raise bluff, tag that hand. Every time you make the play, tag it. If you have the opportunity to check raise but you don't make the play, tag that hand as well. You can quickly pull up these tagged hands in your next study session in Poker Tracker 4, and that gives you the chance to analyze and refine your strategies. Now, tip number five is record game tape. Now, this is optional, but I highly recommend it. I love recording game tape of my play. I think that game tape is probably the number one poker strategy that most people are not doing. Now, This is where you use a screen capture software and a microphone. You record your play online as you speak the logic behind every decision. The way I do it is I'm imagining like I'm streaming my play to my adoring fans, right? My job is to make great decisions and my fans want to hear the logic behind those great decisions. So I'm going to say things like, okay, I'm calling here with a normal hand that I would fold in the big blind, but I'm calling to try check raise bluffing this player who open raised who's a frequent flop C better. And if the flop is dry and unconnected, I am going to check raise bluff him three times his C bet. So I know when I'm verbalizing the logic behind my decisions like this, it's a great sign that I understand what I'm going for, but it's also a great way to help me stay focused on the strategy because if people are watching behind me, I need to keep speaking through my logic. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. Play three focus sessions while practicing one strategy. So pick a strategy that you're trying to develop and play just one or two tables as you look for every opportunity to practice to use that strategy. 
Write out the strategy components ahead of time for quick reference while you're playing. Set a goal and tag those key hands. And of course, try recording game tape for at least one of the focus sessions you're about to play. Now it's your turn to take action and do something positive for your poker game. Oh, that's it now. Get out there and be somebody. Go write a book. Thank you so much for listening and learning with Smart Poker Study. Go to the show notes page, smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 501 to help you take notes from today's episode. And while you're there, you can sign up for the How to Win Online Poker Workshop in the sidebar. Plus, you can click that link to get the Smart HUD for Poker Tracker 4 so you can turn yourself into an online poker exploiting machine. Until next time, take action both on and off the felt to become the player that you want to be.